Henry Ireton was an English general in the Parliamentary Army during the English Civil War, the son-in-law of Oliver Cromwell. He was the eldest son of German Ireton of Attenborough, Nottinghamshire, and was baptized in St. Mary's Church on 3 November 1611. He became a gentleman commoner of Trinity College, Oxford in 1626, graduated B.A. in 1629, and entered the Middle Temple the same year. On the outbreak of the Civil War, he joined the Parliamentary Army, fighting at the Battle of Edge Hill in October 1642, and at the Battle of Gainsborough in July 1643. He was made Deputy Governor of the Isle of Ely by Cromwell, and served under Manchester in the Yorkshire Campaign, and at the Second Battle of Newbury, afterwards supporting Cromwell in his accusations of incompetency against the general. On the night before the Battle of Nassaby, in June 1645, Ayrton succeeded in surprising the Royalist army, and captured many prisoners. The next day, on the suggestion of Cromwell, he was made Commissary General and appointed to the command of the left wing, Cromwell himself commanding the right. The wing under Ayrton, was completely broken by the impetuous charge of Rupert and Ayrton was wounded and taken prisoner, but Cromwell charged and successfully routed the Royalists, freeing prisoners including Ayrton. Ayrton was at the Siege of Bristol in September 1645, and took part in the subsequent campaign that succeeded in overthrowing the royal cause. On 30 October 1645 Ayrton entered the Parliament as member for Appleby. On 15 June 1646, during the siege of Oxford he and Bridget Cromwell, daughter of Oliver Cromwell, were married. The marriage brought Ayrton's career into parallel with Cromwell's. While Cromwell's policy was practically limited to making the best of the present situation, and was inclined to compromise, Ayrton's attitude was based on well-grounded principles of statesmanship. At the Putney debates he opposed extremism, disliked the views of the Republicans and the Levellers, which he considered impractical and dangerous to the foundations of society, and wished to retain the constitution of King, Lords, and Commons. He argued for these in the negotiations of the army with Parliament, and in the conferences with the King being the person chiefly entrusted with the drawing up of the army proposals, including the manifesto called the heads of the proposals which proposed a constitutional monarchy. He tried to prevent the breach between the army and parliament, but when it happened, he supported the negotiations with the king till his actions made him unpopular. Ayrton finally became convinced of the hopelessness of dealing with King Charles, and, after the king's flight to the Isle of Wight, treated his further proposals with coldness, and urged the parliament to establish an administration without him. Ayrton served under Fairfax in the Second Civil War in the campaigns, in Kent and Essex, although it was Fairfax, as Lord General, and not Ayrton as is sometimes believed, who was responsible for the executions of Sir Charles Lucas and Sir George Lysel at Colchester. After the rejection by the King of the last offers of the army, the Commissary General showed special zeal in bringing about his trial. He wrote the army's statement about the regicide a circumflex the remonstrance of the army a circumflex with Jupiter's. He was active in the choice to purge, rather than re-elect Parliament, and supported the second level agreement of the people. He sat on the King's trial and was one of the commissioners who signed the death warrant. Ayrton's regiment was chosen by lot, to accompany Cromwell in his Irish campaign. Ayrton arrived in Dublin two days after Cromwell on 17 August 1649, with 77 ships full of troops and supplies. Ayrton was appointed Major General, and after the conquest of the South of Ireland, Lord President of Munster. He went over with John Cook with a brief to reform the law of Ireland, to anglicise it, and make it a model for a new settlement of English law.